Welcome to our sixth podcast, Discipleship at Home. Today I would like to talk about principles as well as a specific tool of biblical discipline and how we can have an amazing impact on the discipleship of our children. Uh, my wife has some things that I'd like for her to share about communication since this was a strong point in her child rearing. I need to go back to some basic issue here. Um, do you realize that when God uh, created Adam and Eve, he told them to be fruitful and multiply. And his next command was, teach them who I am. I mean, scripture says this different ways throughout scripture. Um, it was at that moment that the idea of disciple making became in existence. I mean, we are to disciple our children. That's why I hold it as the most priority in, in my life. Um, we're talking about methods in which we do that, but um, there was, I was just having a conversation with this gentleman over here. Um, he was talking about someone under five years old, and it was brought up over here, well, they can't really discuss at five years old. But he was giving me an example that bears uh, saying, our children need to understand, all our children were saved by five or six. Because if there's anything a child understands is that they've done something wrong. And they need to identify what sin is. And you need to take them, even though it's hard to call your child a sinner. I was telling him, I can go in a grocery store and I can, I can um, hear a baby's cry. And I can know whether that, the cry is from a nurturing need or if the cry is anger and self-will. And so I, I do think that we have a responsibility from the get-go to, to talk to our children about that very factor because that's their first discovery is that they need Christ. And um, so we can have conversations um, at a young age if it's just simply on that um, discussion point at all. And that's the beginning of our disciple making. Um, I want to talk about communication because um, it's key and there's certain factors we have to have throughout our communication time with our children and one is respect. Now how can I respect this four-year-old or this eight-year-old or this rebellious 15-year-old? You can respect them as a person. There's this old mindset a child is a child to be seen and not heard. I mean, in different cultures, it's emphasized different ways. We slap them, we say, go over here. We go to the Philippines, the kids have to eat the last, they're, they're the last ones to eat in the Filipino family, you know, and um, there, there's ways that we make them or demean them in an unimportant role. You know, you're, you're to be seen and not heard. But I personally believe that we have to, from the beginning, respect what they have to say and allow them to say it. Um, there's some things that cause us not to let them talk. One is we're not sure that we can answer them. And um, they're too young to really have identifiable, bio, ident identifiable um, concepts, you know. But they need to understand that we're willing to listen. And a lot of parents aren't willing to listen. So from the beginning, I was listening to my kids. I don't care. We have grandchildren. And um, a three-year-old came up to me the other day. And, Grandma, did you know this, this, and this? And, and I listened to her. And that gave her confidence in me that I was a place that she could go to talk about something. I was gonna, wasn't going to cut her down for it, or you don't know, and you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, it sets up the future. It sets up uh, uh, ability to uh, trust, which is the second thing, a safe place. You know, even in our marriages between husbands and wives, the reason we don't resolve conflict is because we don't feel safe. And that's a whole other issue, but we can't, we can't bring up this subject matter because if we bring it up, he's just going to get irate. And when I go home or get in the car, he's going to yell at me and everything. So we never resolve things because we don't have a safe place. And I think we should um, work to create that safe place for them. That no matter when they get teenagers and they accepted Christ when well, seven or eight, but in, they're 15 years old and they're doubting their salvation, you go, oh, you're doubting your salvation, you know, and you're not willing to listen to why 
willing to discuss what doubt is and where it comes from and what salvation is and where all that, you haven't given them a safe place. So we need to create that safety in communication so that they can talk to us anytime, any place. And that in that also involves dropping everything, mothers. <laughs> you know, I mean, or fathers, you know, you're in the middle of a chess game or you're watching football, I'm sorry. But, you know, or moms, you know, busy cooking or whatever. Um, I have two outward processors, and you need to understand your kids. I have two outward processors and two internal processors. The outward processors come in and spew everything that they know about a subject matter and what they're thinking. They just say it all. And they could sound very theologically incorrect or, you know, and, and you want to say, oh, correct them, you know. They're just processing and you need to understand that that's what they're doing. So you need to understand your kids, their personalities, the way they process things, um, understand their spiritual gifts so you can cultivate that, um, the spiritual gifts that God's given them, and their personal abilities, you know. So um, they need to have that safe place where they can talk about anything and you're not going to push them aside. And allowing them, is what I said, time, time was my third point, is allowing that to take place, no matter what you're doing. Um, John, uh, I, was, I wasn't the type of homeschooler that was just do this, do this, do this, do this, we got to accomplish this by the end of the day. And I think God made me that way, that when something came up, I stopped everything and we took time to talk and I created opportunities I took them with me wherever I went created opportunities for them to talk because you know when you sit down and say okay now talk to me <laughs> they're not going to know what to say it comes in the strangest moments and most inopportune time 1030 I click off my mind's dead and now they want to talk about something you know so it you've got to be ready and you've got to be sacrificial and in your when you want to communicate with your kids and establish a relationship um, with them. Debbie said something about processors. That, that's a good point that I hadn't planned on talking about. Let me just make a comment about that. Um, outward processors, when they say something, uh, allow them to keep saying it even though it's wrong. And by the time they finish what they're saying, they'll probably correct themselves. <laughs> uh, my daughter, for example, she knew what she believed. She was, uh, prob she was uh, 17 or 18. And I heard her in the kitchen talking to her mother, and she said something that was theologically wrong. Well, here dad jumps up and runs in there to, to correct her. I know that she knows what she believes, but I'm not realizing that she's processing. <laughs> and if I would have just kept quiet and let her finish what she's saying, she would have corrected herself. And, uh, and I learned that uh, my, my oldest son and my daughter both process that way. And uh, internal processors don't do that. But... If you have a child like that, let them talk and don't jump in to correct them. Let them finish. And dads will, will tend to jump in and, and my daughter would say, Dad, you didn't let me finish. And I didn't. So I had to learn. I had to keep my mouth quiet and let my daughter process and finish before I got involved in the discussion. And so some of you all have, have that um, lesson to learn, too, if you haven't already. So communication is really important. And uh, uh, we can, all of us can improve in that area, even if we're good communicators.